Hello, my name is John Ops, and I am Director of Research and Development at Netrix Corporation. In today's video, I will be demonstrating the Pass the Ticket attack. Pass the Ticket is an attack on Active Directory that allows you to assume a ticket for another user without having to compromise that user's password. Typically, this attack would target a user with higher AD domain privilege than the user we are logged in with, but Pass the Ticket can be used for lateral movement, i.e., getting access to another machine that the target account has access to that also has a higher level access account logging into it, and data exfiltration, i.e. we can use a stolen ticket to access a file server that we should not have access to, such as a financial data server. All that we need for that ticket we are after is to be resident in memory on a computer that we have access to, meaning there is an account that has been logged on to our computer recently, and that we have local administrative privilege on the computer we're connected to. Local administrative privilege can be accomplished by any number of various other attacks, which we won't be getting into today, just assuming that we have that permission already. In my demonstration today, I will be passing the Kerberos Ticket Granting Ticket, or KRBTGT, from the domain administrator to my non-privileged domain user. This is why tools like Netflix Privilege Secure or other PAM solutions are important. Limited lifetime administrative accounts, also known as ephemeral accounts, cannot fall victim to this attack after they are destroyed, unlike persistent administrative accounts, which leave a security risk behind. Even rotating the password of a persistent account after use cannot prevent this attack. Let me share my screen and walk you through the attack process. Having already made my way into an end user's Windows 10 workstation via some exploit that allows me to run in the context of the user who happens to have local administrative rights, I can begin the attack. Our goal today is to get shell access to the domain controller. So let's open up a command prompt as administrator. So let me first attempt to gain access to the domain controller before we execute the attack to show that the domain is secured and that my non-administrative user cannot have shell access to our domain controller. So I'll be using psxec64, which is just a utility to remotely execute PowerShell on a target server. My domain controller is named DC01 and we want to run PowerShell remotely. And as you can see here, uh, access is denied. So our non-privileged user does not have access. All right, so as you can see, I am in a directory called MimiCats. That's the tool that we'll be using today to execute this attack. Note that other tools do exist for this, and this code can be obfuscated hidden. So simply doing pattern matching for this executable or the specific code within it uh, will only stop the lowliest of script kitties. So the first thing we're going to do with MimiCats is run it to get a list of all of the tickets that are currently on the system. So I'll run MimiCats. We'll use privilege debug. And we will get a list of all the tickets. And we will export those to files via that switch. So now you can see it's gone through and it's exported all the files. Uh, if we look at what's in here, we can see that we have found administrative tickets. So in a real world attack, the privileged account that we're after, you know, like I said, might only be a backup operator, or it might be a service account that has slightly higher privileges. In this example, we're going after the domain administrator, but that's more than likely not going to be a real world attack. This attack is typically used for lateral movement. So I take a slightly higher account here. I compromise it. I use that ticket to get on another machine where I can get an even higher level access and so on and so forth. Now that we have these tickets exported to files, we can again use MimiCats to pass those tickets to the user that we've compromised that we're logged in as. So the one we're most interested in today is the KRBTGT ticket. So let's copy that file name. All right, so we will again call MimiCats. And this time we will use Kerberos, pass the ticket, and we'll paste the name of our file here. All right, and you can see now that it says the file has been added to our account uh, via this OK here. Now, just for the demo, we can run MimiCats again and list out all the tickets. Uh, we know it worked here, but let's just go ahead and show that we have all of the tickets on our compromised account. So we do Kerberos. list 
you can see that we have the administrative ticket on our account, which is not an administrator. So that should be all we need. Now we can attempt again to get remote shell to our domain controller. So we'll do PS exec 64, DC01, and let's run PowerShell. And we're in as the domain admin with full access to do whatever we want. So we can take a look here. And as you can see, we have complete unrestricted administrative access to the domain controller, even though we never got the domain administrator's password. All we did was pass the ticket to our account. All right, so as you can see, this is not a complex attack to execute, but it is a well-known attack, so there are lots of good pieces of advice and tooling around preventing it from happening, hopefully to you. As an example, many XDR and endpoint solutions will detect and block LSAT's hooking and ticket injection, which would have stopped me in my tracks on this attack. Also, we talked about PAM solutions, ephemeral accounts. That's why security isn't a single-pronged approach. You need multiple angles to really secure your Active Directory from adversaries. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful. Please check out the other videos on our channel, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.